Two things to get through today. Uh, first of all is that Daniel Kutinski can purchase the remaining shares of West Ham United for a full takeover if he so wishes at an already agreed fee. And secondly, he's spoken out well. He's written for the first time since purchasing that 27% share of West Ham United via the Evening Standard. I've put the link to the article in the description below. Go have a read. It's a good read. Uh, it's well worth it. And it's, I think it's important that we do as well as West Ham fans because it's the first time we've heard from him. We don't hear from him too much either. But perhaps the biggest news is the Putin call option that was agreed when Kutinsky purchased 27% of West Ham United. So there's a clause in the deal that allows Kutinsky the option to purchase shares at an already agreed price. And it also gives David Sullivan the right to sell his shares to Kutinsky at that same price. It protects both of them going forward. So West Ham were to qualify for Champions League football this season. The share price doesn't go up and protects Kutinski. But likewise, should West Ham suffer form and drop down the table a little bit, the share price does not alter and it protects David Sullivan. Now there is obviously stipulations here that other people can purchase shares at the same price as well. But in regards to Kutinski, I think it gives the first indication as to how serious he is at West Ham and that the option is there. They've already agreed the fee. And I think there's quite clearly a plan for A, Kutinski buying more shares at West Ham United and B, David Sullivan, David Gold exiting West Ham. Now, the clause is in place for a certain period of time only. However, that time is unknown at the moment. It's not in there. It's on Company House. You can go over and read up of it yourself. I'll put the, the, the link in the description for that too. And like I said, I've taken a couple of days to try to get my head around it a little bit and speak to people who know more about this stuff than I do because... Football finances and stuff like that is not my forte. I may have even got this wrong. So apologies if I do, but I've done my best anyway. I've done my best. Right. So as I as I understand it, in layman's terms, Kutinski has agreed a fee with David Sullivan to purchase remaining shares of West Ham United if he so wishes in the near future. Now, I think you can take a stab in the dark, an educated guess as to when that clause will overrun. Because in, we know in March 2023, and that is when the clause expires between West Ham, well, David Sullivan, David Gold, and the government, the LLDC, over the London Stadium Tennis Agreement. Essentially, if Gold and Sullivan sell up today, they have to hand over a large part of their profits to the LLDC in regard in relation to the tennis agreement for the London Stadium. But that expires in March 23. If they sell it on April the 1st, 2023, they sell the club completely. They owe nothing. All that profit they can keep themselves. And this has always been a bit of a, pardon me, theory that West Ham fans have had about David Sullivan. This was always their, always their plan: get the stadium, get past the ten, get past the ten years agreement, and once that's done, sell the club and keep all the profit. And it's looking like that is the case. It's looking like that would be the case. Um, so March 2023 is when I'd expect more noise about Kutinski purchasing further stakes in West Ham, should he wish to. And the indication is there that he will. Now, we don't hear too much from him. He doesn't speak very much at all. There's, uh, if you Google and try and find articles on him, there's plenty of articles on him. But in regards to him speaking out, there's not too many. He's quite a reserved private person, which is a good thing. After over a decade of a Sullivan and Gordon, how many times have you thought, oh, just shut your beak, be quiet, you're embarrassing us, you're saying things that you can't follow up on. And their promises were always a little bit not wishy-washy, but it was too much for them. They, they made these promises and they failed to deliver on them and they've struggled to deliver them as well. In Kutinsky's article, there's no words such as promise. There's no promises as such. There's certainly a plan as to what he has for the short-term future of West Ham United. And it's good. I think it's very sensible. I think it's very relatable as a West Ham fan and it's good to read. And it's a complete contrast to the whole pie capital thing. And... You know, they did everything wrong from the start, Pike After the way they communicated, the way they went about their business, everything was wrong. I mean, there were suspicions as to whether Pike Capital was even real. There was, let's call it conspiracy theories, because that's what it was at the time, which is either A, they were made up, they didn't even exist. They were made up purely to make Sullivan look good. They were made up to force Kratinsky, and we didn't know it was Kratinsky at the time, to force another party's hand into purchasing the club to drive their share price up. Whatever the conspiracy theories was, one of them was right, weren't they? One of them was right. One of those reasons, I think that's pretty much all the theories out there. Um, but one of those theories was correct, possibly even more than that. Because prior to bidding for West Ham, Pi Capital didn't have a social media presence. They created a Twitter account, they tried to get it going, they used a couple of influencers on social media, helped boost their Twitter account as well. 
And since they've declared they no longer wanted to purchase West Ham United, they've not done a tweet. They've stopped. They've stopped altogether. So there's enough evidence to suggest that the bid was, whether it was real or not or whatever, there was it was a little bit fishy. Um, but we can move on from that now. It's in the past. It seemed a bit fishy at the time. And even now you look back with hindsight and you think, it, it, that was a weird thing. It was a bit strange. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if stuff comes out in the future about Pi Capital not being all it was making on it was kind of thing. But anyway, it's done now. Kutinski is currently the second largest shareholder at West Ham United. And it looks to be, as it stands, the future. We've always had beliefs that this was... The reason uh, that Kutinski was getting involved at West Ham, that he would eventually want to own the whole of West Ham. But it was just an opinion. And it still is an opinion, but it's now an opinion with a bit of poof. He's agreed the, 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 the share price going forward. And we've now heard from him what his plan is. And he's very much speaking about the long-term West Ham. He's not speaking about the short-term. Well, he is, but he's playing it down. He's basically said in the article, we will not be spending big money in January. He says he's been impressed by David Moyes over the last 18 months, the way we've been gradually improving, and he wants to encourage that. I use the word organically, and I wish I remembered the phrase that he used. It was a nice phrase, evolving. It was some gradual evolution. That's it. That was the phrase Kotinski used, gradual evolution of the football club or something like that. And it was, it was a nice phrase. I, but I'm still going to use organically. It's just easier to remember. Um, but that's how he sees West Ham growing, just within their own means, slowly, uh, slowly, slowly, catchy monkey and all that. That's what he thinks West Ham should do. Now, that doesn't mean we won't spend money. He's not saying there's no money to spend. What he's saying is we won't chuck money at January. And that's what I think is the right thing to do. I don't think there's been too many West Ham fans out there that's been hoping someone's going to come in and spend 200 million in the first transfer window. Um, there, there, there is some, of course there is, but I think most people want to see someone come in and just run the club sensibly on a sound footing with a long-term plan and, to put it lightly, it doesn't take the piss, essentially. And in it, he speaks about how he's made errors at Sparta Prague, about how when he was at Prague, he threw money at it um, at the start and it didn't work out. The results didn't follow, so he's learned his lessons from that. And that's something that's important because while we have no experience of Kotinski, and I never heard of him until uh, the Athletic reported that he was going to be purchasing West Ham. The only people that I've sort of paid too a lot of attention to is is the Prague fans, and there is a lot of Czech fans that support West Ham, uh, some somewhat under the influence of Sue Czech and Sue Fan. But why wouldn't they? And they've popped up in the video comments about Kretinsky basically saying he's a poor owner, he's not a good owner. I know why you're excited, understand why you're excited, but don't get your hopes up at West Ham. So it's made me a little bit reserved because they don't speak too highly of him. And they're the ones with experience of supporting a football club under the ownership and guidance of Kotinski. But what Kotinski is doing in this article is almost putting his hands up to some extent and saying, I've got stuff wrong. I've got stuff wrong at Kotinski. And my hope as Geo, as a West Ham fan, is that he has learned from those mistakes and that we're going to benefit from it. We're going to benefit from his apprenticeship, if you like, um, and that's going to sound really harsh, and if you're a Prague fan, I apologise, but that's how I'm viewing it as a West Ham fan, that Prague was his apprenticeship as a football owner, and he's got things wrong, he's messed up a little bit, but West Ham is his serious business. You know, he owns 40% of Prague, and it's not gone above that, whereas West Ham, we've now got an indication that he's possibly going to own 100% of it in the future. So that would insinuate that... West Ham's his main project, if you like, and Prague is no longer his main project. But he speaks very nicely in the article. Um, what is interesting is how often he speaks about non-football stuff. He almost speaks about football as a power, as to what football means to people, away from a Saturday afternoon, away from the football pitch, you know, about how, right now, this is Friday, today's Friday, you're, you're probably watching this on Friday, in the afternoon, in the evening, maybe Saturday morning, West Ham played last night, and they don't play again until Sunday. But this is what Kutinski's implying here, which is you're still involved in West Ham, even though there's no football match on. It's basically saying that football is a massive thing for people's lives. It's a massive influence for people. And that anyone should be able to access it. Anyone can access it. And it has an almost like a, a unique power in order to, to motivate and inspire, if you like. And I just thought it was interesting that he dedicated a couple of paragraphs. You know, he gets to address the West Ham fan base for the first time. And it's not a big article, I don't know, there's seven paragraphs maybe. And two of them, he's almost speaking about how football 
has a responsibility away from the football pitch. And I just thought it was interesting and not a bad thing either um, because he's not wrong, is he? Football is a really powerful tool. And it was, that's a, uh, listen, I'm not going to sit here and say that if you said to me, what's the 10 things you want to see in a football owner? That wouldn't have been in my top 10. I would not have said, well, I'd like him to encourage children to get involved in football or whatever he's implying. That would not have been on there. But it's nice to see, it's nice to hear and almost you're able to relate to him in paragraphs two and three, for example, you can relate to him as a football fan. He's speaking about how he wants the academy, how the academy is important, that he produces players for the club, how he wants the club to grow. Um, you can relate to that as a West Ham fan. But in those other paragraphs, you can relate to him as a human being, really. You can take your client and blue specs off for a minute and you can listen to what he's saying and you can relate to it and think, actually, be a player to you, good on you. Morals, I guess, is is comes through in that, in that article. Anyway, I'm blabbing a little bit there. But yes, his article... Just what we want to hear, just what we need. It's simple, short, sweet, simple, unlike this video. Short, short, sweet and simple, but encouraging. It's encouraging. And if he can stick to what he's saying, and to be fair, he's not saying much. And I think this is the difference. I think Sullivan and Gold almost felt the pressure to promise too much under the sun and cover they'd almost cover too much stuff they basically said we're going to do this for the stadium this away from the football pitch this on the football pitch and they they, they spread themselves too thin i think a little bit whereas Kutinsky's keeping it short and sweet which is not going to spend loads of money but it's important that we look after the club's infrastructure that we're constantly improving we're constantly learning and hopefully in regards to the business side of things he can help west ham grow um economically as well but yes the first indication, first time we've heard from Kutinski since purchasing 27% of the club a couple of weeks ago, but also the first time we've now got an indication or, or proof, a little bit of evidence that actually maybe he will purchase eventually 100% of West Ham. However, I don't think it'll be happening until March 2023. Anyway, um, that's all for me. Um, myself and Gonzo are back this evening with the Man City preview. If you've enjoyed this video, drop a like on it. Subscribe if you're new to the channel.